Alright guys, I am back with another Horror Room Movie Review, and this is The Hills Have Eyes 2 from 2007, the sequel to the remake. And after watching this one, I kind of felt like it was slightly better than a sci-fi movie. At times it felt like that. I'm not saying it was a bad movie or anything, but at times it did feel like something you'd see on the sci-fi channel. Uh, which is weird because it was all written and produced by Wes Craven so just like the um, original and the remake so I kinda expected more from this one but it wasn't really bad I just felt they could have they could have done more with these characters some of them some of the cannibals were a little bit cheesy and the acting wasn't as good but it's still it was an entertaining movie I mean it's worth watching it kept me interested uh, but it had a budget of $15 million and it made back $67 million, so still a successful movie. And it's also much shorter, it's only an hour and 25 minutes. But we see a woman, obviously a prisoner, and she's giving birth to a deformed baby and then someone kills her, I guess Papa Hades. And something I noticed in this movie and the remake some of the cannibals, I think uh, Lizard in the remake and Papa Hades here, both look like Gary Busey with this makeup on. It's strange. But it says, Two years ago, an American family took a wrong turn and drove into a military area known as Sector 16. By dawn, half the family had been slaughtered, and in the following weeks, the Army conducted search-and-destroy missions throughout the area. Recently, electronic monitoring was installed it was nearly in place dot 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 and we see some tech guys installing these surveillance equipment when the feed goes out so one of them goes to check on it and when they try to radio him we see that he's been ripped in half and then there's another scientist who gets killed by a cannibal he gets uh, hit in the head with an axe so soldiers in the area he was supposed to be escorting them and then he gets stabbed in the back with a spear and thrown off the cliff. And I didn't even think about it till just now, but I think this soldier here was um, in the new Star Trek movie. I think he's the admiral in the Star Trek movie. This guy's just a natural villain. But here he gets thrown off the cliff. And then we see our cast of characters, this motley crew here. Um, some National Guard soldiers are training and they're not very good so they're doing this training exercise and there's this one scene where one of them pulls out a couple grenades and he's like kick open the door and they're all like clusterfuck like what huh what's going on and he's like kick open the door I got some grenades here why couldn't he just kick open the door why could he not do this so they all die in this exercise and they get chewed out by the drill sergeant who looks like Nick Cannon. And they go to Sector 17 in New Mexico. So on the way to the sector we learn that Crank, one of the soldiers, is a huge dick. That's about it. Crank is played by um, Joker from Next Friday, the I'm an Aztec warrior guy. And I can't remember if there's anybody else I recognized in this movie besides that one soldier guy. Possibly. He may even be a different guy, but uh, besides Joker, I can't think of anyone. <clears throat> so they arrive at the sector, but it's deserted. And the sergeant picks up a radio signal from someone who sounds injured, so they leave on a search and rescue mission. And he leaves one of the soldiers behind, <clears throat> a soldier named Napoleon, because Napoleon said, hey, maybe we shouldn't go up into the cliffs, we should wait and contact headquarters. So he punishes this guy, and he leaves him behind along with Amber to keep trying the radio. So on the cliffs, one of the soldiers almost falls into a hole, but the sergeant saves him, but his ankle's messed up, so he tells him, hey, go back to the camp with the others. Back at camp, Napoleon goes to use the porter potty, and Shitman the Barbarian pops out. This was pretty funny. 
but there yes, there is a guy in the porta potty still alive, covered in shit. Um, they get him out of there, and all he says is they're here, and then he dies. So they try the radio again, and then they see that someone has set the truck on fire, and their guns are gone. And Amber's freaking out. She wants to go find the others. Napoleon decides to stay behind. So on her way, she gets attacked by a cannibal. I think his name is Stabber. He has a meat cleaver. I get all these names from Wikipedia. I honestly don't know. They never really call the cannibals by name. So you just have to kind of guess which one's which. But um, I think this one's Stabber. And Mickey, the guy with the twisted ankle, shows up and shoots him. So Stabber retreats into this little hole in the cliff and just runs and dives in. And he's gone. And then Mickey's saying, hey, are you okay? And then Stabber reaches through this tiny little hole and grabs Mickey's leg and pulls him through the hole. And his leg's getting stuck in this thing. And despite Napoleon and Amber trying to pull him out, Stabber is so strong, he rips this guy all the way through this tiny little hole. Like, his other leg bends up, and his body gets smashed through it. It was a pretty cool scene. So, Mickey's dead. Um, the soldiers find the body of one of the scientists with his wallet sticking out of his head. And they try the radio again, but they still can't get a signal. The injured person calls on the other radio but this time the voice is different. So they start to think, hey, something really strange is going on here. They continue up the cliffs when, uh, with Spitter and Crank watching the rear, and Spitter gets attacked by a cannibal, so he's trying to shoot at this cannibal, and the sergeant runs up like, hey, what the fuck's going on? And Spitter shoots the sergeant. <laughs> He kills him, he's dead. He was like the strongest character taken out. So Amber and Napoleon show up and tell the others what happened to Mickey. And they try to head back to camp with the sergeant's body. They're going to have Spitter hold on to the sergeant. They're going to lower him down the cliff so they can get his body back. And a cannibal cuts the cord so Spitter falls to his death. And they go to find the rest of the ropes and they're all gone. So now none of them can get down the cliff. They're trapped up there. They find the body of the soldier who was uh, stabbed with a spear in the beginning. The guy I said was a, a natural villain who I think is in the new Star Trek. And he tells them about the cannibals and he says that they want the females for breeding. And he's being a huge asshole about it. So they ask him how they can get down and he shoots himself. Well what the hell was he waiting all this time for? If he was just going to kill himself anyway and didn't think anyone was going to show up, what was he waiting for? It was like he was just waiting on some people to show up so he could talk shit before he died. It doesn't make any sense, and this guy had to be sitting there forever. So I thought that was kind of strange. So they... Let me see where I'm at here. They use uh, Amber and Missy as bait because they want the females. And they lure out the stabber cannibal with the meat cleaver, and they shoot him. So Missy goes off to take a piss, and she gets caught by a cannibal that looks like a rock. Um, chameleon. He's actually got like a, a lizard tongue. and He looks just like the lizard from the new Spider-Man movie, actually. But he can camouflage himself, so he's chameleon. And he grabs her. He looks like a leafy bug, like Eddie Murphy would say. But he grabs her and drags her off into the tunnel. So the others chase after him. And then Stump decides, hey, I don't really want to go into this mine. So I'm going to take my chances going back down the cliff and I'll go get some help. So he leaves to go do his own thing. They find Missy's cell phone in front of the chute. And Delmar goes down first. And he runs into some rocks blocking his path. So he kicks him down and he continues down the chute. But the rocks would obviously tell them that they didn't go this way. The cannibals did not go down the chute, but they all followed Delmar anyway. And we see Stump climbing down the cliff when he comes to a cave. So he continues climbing down. A cannibal pulls him up, cuts his arm off, and he falls to his death. Amber puts a bullet in her pocket and says, 
She's saving one for herself. And Napoleon says, remember what Crank said, dead is never better. Um, in this case it is, especially if you're a female. Napoleon and Amber fall down a hole. Crank tries to jump the hole and almost falls in. Delmar has to save him. Crank just sucks at everything. So Chameleon tries to rape Missy. She bites off his lizard tongue. And then Papa Hades shows up. He throws Chameleon out and he rapes Missy. He's the one that looks like Gary Busey. Amber and Napoleon uh, run into Chameleon, but they're out of bullets, so Amber gouges out his eyes and Napoleon bashes his head in with a rock. And then another cannibal shows up. His name is Grabber, and he's blind. He's wearing glasses, but he can't see shit. And so they're trying to hide from this one, and they run into a nice cannibal named Lech or Hansel, who helps them. Now, Wikipedia says his name is Hansel, but it makes more sense that the other one's called Hansel and his that this one's called Lech, but it said uh, Hansel, so I'm going to call him Hansel. Hansel, so hot right now. <laughs> but he tries to help them out. We see Grabber go after Delmar and Crank. They shoot him using the last of their bullets, and Delmar gets hit, but he acts like he's okay for now. Napoleon pops out and says, guys, over here. So they follow him, and then they see that he's being helped by one of the cannibals. And they're like, all right, if you trust him, we'll go along with it, whatever. And they never really did anything with this cannibal. Like, they had the nice cannibal, kind of like Ruby in the original and the remake. Um, but he kind of just disappears eventually. <laughs> and that was it. So they're following him, and then Delmar collapses because... They find out he was actually shot twice, he was just hiding it, and he dies. So they follow Hansel some more, and he takes them to a blast door. Amber and Napoleon want to go back for Missy. Crank is like, man, she's dead, forget about her. So he starts looking for a way to get open the door, and he finds some dynamite, and accidentally blows himself up. So Napoleon and Amber hear this, they rush back to see if he's okay, and I guess the blast door is open now. Um, and they hear Missy on the other side. So they go through the blast door, and they come to this office room with some nuclear test dummies, and one of them is a cannibal, and this one is Lech, I guess. So he's wearing a soldier's suit, and he pops up, and they get into a fight with him, and they stab him to death. But this really didn't make sense, because so much stuff would have to happen for him to have this plan succeed. I mean, he's dressed in a disguise, but how did he know they could get the blast door open and they would even go this way? How long was he sitting there hiding in disguise waiting on them? But they kill him and they make it to the room with Missy and they use her cell phone to lure Papa Hades out of the room. But he comes back and they get into a fight and Amber takes her last bullet and shoots him in the head they stab him with a spear, they stab his arm with a pickaxe, and finally they stab him through the mouth with a bayonet and kill Papa Hades. Amber, Napoleon, and Missy leave the mines, and it says the disappearance of the trainees and sergeant has never been explained to their families, and officially they were listed as absent without leave. Sector 16 is still uh, not acknowledged to exist. And then we see a cannibal watching them on the surveillance equipment. So that's how the movie ended. Um, like I said, it's not really that it's a bad movie or anything, but they could have did so much more with this one. So that's, what, that's really what bothered me. It was kind of just disappointing. And I was reading on Wikipedia that Wes Craven actually wanted Claire from Lost, who played Brenda in the remake, to come back, but because of her schedule with Lost, she couldn't do it. And I guess that's one reason the movie kind of feels thrown together. Um, if she did come back, it probably would have made more sense. But um, yeah, that's the Hills Have Eyes series. That's the last movie in the series. Um, I think it's a great movie series. I personally didn't mind part two, the original part two. So I have to say, one, two, and the two remakes aren't that bad. They're entertaining for what they are. Um, the only one that really sucks is Part 3. My God, that movie was terrible. 
I will never watch that again. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for some fun horror movies, I would definitely check out the remake and its sequel. And the original's pretty good too. So anyways, that's my review of the Hills Have Eyes series. Um, I can finally start a new horror movie series. I know it's taken me forever to finish this one. Um, but I did order some new posters, so as soon as they arrive, I'll start the new series. And I'm thinking the next series I want to do a longer horror franchise. And then I want to do a, a shorter one of uh, some movies maybe not a lot of people know about. And then do another really long series. So that's kind of the plan for right now. But Anyways, that's my review of The Hills Have Eyes 2 from 2007. Hope you guys liked the video. Leave your thoughts on this movie in the comments. And thanks for watching. So just like the um, original and the remake, so I kind of expected more from this one, but it wasn't really bad. I just felt they could have they could have done more with these characters. Some of them, some of the cannibals were a little bit cheesy, and the acting wasn't as good. But it's still it was an entertaining movie. I mean, it's worth watching. It kept me interested. Uh, but it had a budget of 15 million dollars and it made back 60 of them goes to check on it and When they try to radio him we see that he's been ripped in half And then there's another scientist who gets killed by a cannibal. He gets uh, hit in the head with an axe So soldiers in the area he was supposed to be escorting them and then he gets stabbed in the back with a spear and thrown off the cliff and I didn't even think about it till just now, but I think this soldier here was um, in the new Star Trek movie. I think he's the admiral in the Seven Million, so still a successful movie. And it's also much shorter; it's only an hour and twenty-five minutes. But we see a woman, obviously a prisoner, and she's giving birth to a deformed baby, and then someone kills her. I guess Papa Hades, and. Something I noticed in this movie and the remake, some of the cannibals, I think uh, Lizard in the remake and Papa Hades here, both look like Gary Busey with this makeup. Alright guys, I am back with another Horror Room movie review, and this is The Hills Have Eyes 2 from 2007, the sequel to the remake. And after watching this one, I kind of felt like it was slightly better than a sci-fi movie. At times it felt like that. I'm not saying it was a bad movie or anything, but at times it did feel like something you'd see on the sci-fi channel. Uh, which is weird because it was all written and produced by Wes Craven. Upon. It's strange. But it says, Two years ago, an American family took a wrong turn and drove into a military area known as Sector 16. By dawn, half the family had been slaughtered, and in the following weeks, the Army conducted search-and-destroy missions throughout the area. Recently, electronic monitoring was installed. It was nearly in place, dot, dot, dot. And we see some tech guys installing these surveillance equipment when the feed goes out. So one